Hello everybody, I'm here to talk to you about the Asian diet. I also call this the diet, lifestyle, and attitudes talk. A little bit about me. I am an acupuncturist herbalist from the States, and in the States that means that I have completed a four-year master's program in Oriental Medicine. I also did an internship and an advanced course of training in China, and I am, last year was honored to be one of the first Americans accepted into the PhD program at the Guangzhou University of Chinese Medicine, so hopefully in another year and a half I will have my doctorate. I am an author. My book, The Asian Diet, Simple Secrets for Eating Right, Losing Weight, and Being Well, came out last year, and this is why I was invited to speak here today. And that's what the book looks like. I am also an American, which means that most of the patients I see and the lecturing I do is in America to Americans, telling us all the things that we are doing wrong in America. Hopefully, um, well, it, is, it is likely that many of you are not seeing some of these in your cases yet, but it is possible that you will in the future. The influence of American culture, the big food companies, and the big pharmaceutical companies is pervasive and dangerous. So I'd like you to all be aware of the mistakes that we are making so that you may avoid them or nip them in the bud as they arise in your cultures. And being an acupuncturist and studying in China, my perspective is TCM, traditional Chinese medicine. And that's how I view my patients. TCM is all about balance. We view everything in terms of balance, and balance is the goal of life. Now the Chinese have studied the proper balance for millennia. What we have now in Chinese medicine and Chinese culture is the culmination of thousands of years of experimentation, observation, and documentation. And there's a lot that we can learn from the lessons that they have figured out. Medicine can be used to help restore balance, and that's what we do with both Eastern and Western medicine. We're trying to bring our patients back to a state of homeostasis, but the best medicine is prevention. Just like Sun Tzu wrote in The Art of War, the best battle is the one that you avoid. The best medicine is the one that does not treat illness. What does disease mean? Why do we get sick? In the Chinese medicine perspective, it is our body telling us that we need to change something. Nature has built-in mechanisms to help shape our behavior. For example, if you are not flushing away your waste and living with it in society, we will develop epidemic diseases. If you are having a lot of promiscuous, unprotected sex in a society, we will have sexually transmitted diseases take over. Any overuse injury is the body telling us to stop overusing that joint. And so we've got these built-in mechanisms to help shape us and shape our behavior and what we should be doing. In the American model lately, we are viewing that the symptom is the disease and treatment is geared at just getting rid of the symptoms. And this is a dangerous path to follow. The analogy I have for this is like, if your smoke detector goes off in your house, you can take out the batteries. That'll silence the alarm, but your house is still going to burn down. So sometimes we need to do symptom reduction, but we can't neglect the cause. We always need to be looking at what is this coming from? What is the body trying to tell us? Because we see that symptom reduction does not reduce mortality. We're seeing this recently with the cholesterol lowering medicines. People with high cholesterol have a higher incidence of heart disease and fatalities. And so now in America, we're giving everybody these medicines to lower their cholesterol. And they work. But we're not seeing the incidence of heart disease or fatalities come down at all. Because it wasn't the cholesterol that was the problem. The cholesterol was another symptom of the problem. The problem is usually... <laughs> Thank you, David. The symptom is usually something related to the diet, lifestyle, and attitudes. Now we as physicians have got several roles here and traditionally have throughout time. We are first and foremost healers. We want to do the best for our patients. We want to make them more comfortable and healthy. We also all need to be scientists, evaluating what works best for our patients, um, evaluating the recent literature, what works better, <laughs> adopting our techniques, and also contributing to the knowledge base. But we also need to be educators. And this is the piece that I am here to talk to you about. We need to educate our patients so that they can prevent these disorders. So prevention. That is the main thrust in Chinese medicine. It used to be all over in China, and it still is in rural sections, that you pay the physician monthly. And if you get sick, you get a refund. The doctor's job is to keep you well. If you get sick, he or she has already failed you. So it is written that the superior physician does not treat sick patients. That's because the patients of the superior physician do not get sick. Now this might not be the best for business, but for our patients' well-being and for public health, this should be our model. 
So how do we do this? Well, Hippocrates wrote, let your food be your medicine and let your medicine be your food. Medicine, uh, diet should be first and foremost. But in the American education, most doctors, out of their four years of medical education, get less than one week dedicated to nutrition. Hardly enough. So that was the Western take. Sun Simiao, one of the fathers of Chinese medicine, wrote, in cases of disease and disorder, the physician should first address the diet and lifestyle. If that fails, then we can move on to the more heroic modalities of acupuncture, herbs, drugs, and surgery. But diet and lifestyle should be first and foremost. And now I would add one more as the three greatest causes of imbalance, the diet, lifestyle, and attitudes. Traditional Chinese society did not pay much attention to people's hopes, dreams, desires, and feelings. But now we have a much greater understanding of the impact that emotions and stress have on our physiology. So we need to address this as well. So the diet, lifestyle, and attitudes talk. And this is something I go over with all of my patients. Regardless of what they come in for, I want to talk with them about adjusting their diet, lifestyle, and attitudes according to Chinese wisdom. The talk takes me about an hour and a half. I break it up over several sessions. And very often at the end of this talk, my patients would ask, where can I get this in a written form? And I looked around for 10 years for a good source to refer them to, and I couldn't find one, so I wrote my book. Now, I'm not here to sell you on my book. I'm here to sell you on the idea that we should all be going over all of these topics with all of our patients. And this, the talk can be summed up with these two words, balance and moderation. There's a third that we could add, which is variety, but that is kind of implied with the balance and moderation. If you're doing the same thing all the time, it's impossible to be balanced. If you're doing a wide variety of things, it's impossible to not be, ba not be balanced. 